Welcome to my survivalist video and the five things that I keep on hand at all times in case the you know what hits the fan. Now I got five things here that I keep on hand all the time and then I got two honorable mentions. These are the five things that gives me a peace of mind, only five things. And as we all know that there's a shortage on the shelves, you go to Walmart or any kind of grocery store and you'll see just empty aisles of food. There's a lot of reasons behind it. There's a labor shortage. There's n nobody to stock the stuff on the shelves. There's truck driver shortages. And a lot of them, you know, quit or was laid off or, you know, last year for whatever reason and they're not coming back. There's uh, supply issues from China. There's cargo ships in, in the Pacific Ocean that's sitting there with supplies. There's nobody to, to, to actually unload it in California. We're seeing this mass shortage across the country. Now, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I don't think that this will continue forever. During the pandemic, especially of 2020, you, society, our economy came to a complete stop. So now we've got a bottleneck on all these different supplies. Get while the getting's good and, and, it's, and store stuff that you know that you might have to have just in case the trucks do stop. You're not able to go to the gas station and fill up your gas tank. There's no food on the shelves, the stores are closed. It could happen, guys, it could happen. It might be a day, it could happen, it could happen a week, it could happen a month, God forbid, a half a year, but you and your family need to be prepared in case that happens. As I go through these, you're gonna be saying, well, how about this? How about a first aid kit? How about a hunting knife? How about a firearm? You know, we can go on and on, but these are the five things that it's cheap and it, ke it keeps me happy knowing that I'll be fine and my family will be fine. Because if you go through all those things, then eventually it gets to the point, then, well, how come I don't have an underground bunker? So you see what I'm saying? So it's a slippery slope. So the five things that I have on supply at all times is, number one, a water filter. So this is a Brita water f filter, and of course it's a portable filter. You can get these on Amazon, in Walmart, anywhere. And I keep on hand about 20 filters. I use these anyway just to fil filter my town water. You know, it gets everything out from you know, copper, lead, zinc, all this stuff, but it'll also get out impurities and toxins out of your water. So when the crap does hit the fan or if it were to go any further, and if, God forbid if the water pump stopped working and you're not able to get water, or for some reason the water gets contaminated, you want, you want a, a system to, get, to be able to get fresh water or clean water. And I always keep about 20 of these filters. One filter will last me for about three months, but you know, of course the more you use it, the more you need to change out your filter. And the filter just pops in there. You can get these Brita pitchers on Amazon or Walmart, you know, <laughs> if you can find them now. One of my honorable mentions, and I don't list it here as the five, and I'll tell you why in a second, but bleach or chlorine, two drops, literally just two drops of chlorine will completely sanitize a whole liter of water. And it'll actually make it uh, to where you can drink it. It'll make water drinkable, just two drops. The reason I have it as an honorable mention and it's not part of my list is because it's not stable. It's not safe to have around, especially food supplies or whatever. Even in plastic, it can leak or it can go bad or whatever. But the power of just one bottle of bleach to get you through, get you clean water is very important. But just keep that in mind that it's not as stable. So that's the reason I have it as an honorable mention. So water, super, super important as we all know. Second most important thing is white rice. This is a 50 pound bag of white rice. I got this on Amazon for a hundred bucks. That included shipping and everything. It's a little bit higher quality white rice, so that's why it's so expensive. Not brown rice, white rice. So what white rice does is, is it, it stays good for a long period of time. So literally a thing of rice is good for two to three years. Especially if it's stored you know, in a room control temperature and it's kept from the elements and everything. Rice can last for a long time. It's healthy. It's affordable and it's, um, it'll fill you up. It'll fill you and your family up. Healthy kind, this is called a uh, Koku Ho Rice. A hundred bucks on Amazon, but you can get white rice at Sam's Club or Walmart. The same amount for 50 bucks or even cheaper. Brown rice does go bad, so I would not get brown rice. And honestly, I think white rice is healthier uh, without the germ. I mean, they've been making white rice in Asia for millions of years, and that's a reason that they don't do brown rice. One. 50 pound bag will give you uh, one person 1500 calories for 45 days to a month. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of calories. So if you, of course, if you've got family members, get maybe get maybe a couple of these. Always have the thing of white rice on hand in your home 
That way, only thing you need to cook it is just a thing of water and a pan, a hot pan, and just mix it up, you know, over like 15 minutes and you got a meal. Number three is a slingshot. Now, I got this Daisy slingshot on Amazon for like eight bucks. You might want to get a couple. You can get a higher quality that's made of better material. But a slingshot is very important to where you can hunt for vermin. You can hunt for squirrels, rabbits, uh, ducks, birds, everything. I do have a hand of uh, on-hand pellets, but you don't really need that because you can just use rocks. And you might not think that, you know, squirrels are appetizing. And I, I live in Florida, so there's tons of gray squirrels everywhere. But let me tell you something. If you've only eaten a little bit in two weeks or you've just eaten white rice, I'm telling you that squirrel will be edible. Another honorable mention is I do keep like a little USB. And I have some YouTube videos recorded of how to prepare a squirrel or a, a rabbit or whatever. It's not that difficult. And of course you do need a knife. And, and of course you would need to cook it. It's not as difficult as you think it is to prepare whatever. And I'm sure if you get a hang of it, you can prepare several squirrels within an hour. So, slingshot, super important uh, to have on hand and give you peace of mind. Lighters. So I keep about five lighters with me in my bug out box. And five lighters, it obviously it's obvious why you would need a lighter, right? To Not only you can sanitize water, boil water to make water drinkable. You can use it, of course, to cook your squirrel or cook different animals to help uh, disinfect things. Uh, so lighter, you can't go wrong with that. Next I have is a, a power pack. And basically these are used for like jump starting, you know, different for cars and everything. But it also has USB ports. And now let's face it. If the crap hits the fan, there's not going to be any gas. You, you, you won't be able to travel for miles. There will not be gas. So even to fuel up your you know, generator in case you have a generator or if you even have gas on hand. I keep one or two of these completely charged at all times. I'll charge it up every couple of weeks. And don't get me wrong, it's not going to last you forever. But it'll be a good temporary thing. And you know, phone service is still available. You're able to make a phone call or whatever. So with these USB ports, you're able to you know, hook up little small things like maybe a toaster or um, definitely your smartphone and different different little items. So I got a couple of these, or you might be able to jump a car if it's got gas in it. Honorable mention is I keep a couple of books on hand in my bug out box. And this one is made by Marcus Rothkrantz. He's on YouTube, but it's basically a list of all the edible weeds that's out there. And you'll find that weeds that are edible that you can eat, like dandelion and all these other ones, uh, stinging nettle root, the ones that are edible are actually around people. So any urban area or houses or whatever, you'll find them on fences and everything. If you go literally out into the mountains where there's nobody and there hasn't been people in years, it's rare that you find edible plants. It's almost like plants are attracted to us and they go where people are going. So this book will show you how to find these edible plants. And let me tell you something, some of them are good, some of them are medicinal, like dandelion. I used to grow up and I would see dandelions in fields all the time. Heck, they're selling those things for like a bushel for like 10 bucks at Whole Foods. It's like a luxury just to have dandelion. There's a great channel on YouTube called Eat the Weeds. And he's out of Central Florida, his name's Dean. And he shows you and he tells you about how to find these edible weeds. And he actually has a couple of tours that you can do if you're like you're in the Central Florida area. This is another side book. This is called um, When All Hell Breaks Loose. It's by Cody Lundeen. And you probably recognize Cody. He's from uh, Dual Survivor from like the Discovery Channel where the, uh, these two guys would go out into like the Appalachians, the Sahara Desert, different atmospheres and they would survive. And of course, one thing Cody always says is water is the most important thing, right? Because with water, you know, you can't really go two or three days without water. Food, you know, usually you can go weeks, if not a few months without food, especially if you have storage on your body. So, but what's great about this book is that he talks about urban survival, like how to survive like in the city, um, how to catch like little small vermits and how to prepare them and cook them you know, probably even roaches and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, I would not prefer not to eat roach. These are kind of things that gives me a little bit of peace of mind, and I keep them all like in a little Tupperware thing, just throw it in my closet, and it makes me feel good. I have faith in man, I have faith in God, I believe that everything's gonna be fine, but it's always good to have a peace of mind. If something happens and the trucks do stop for a week or a day or whatever, my family and me will be, will be perfectly fine. So in the comment section, let me know what your five of items would be. 
but only make it five items. Tell me what you would sub subtract, which of the five items you would do. All right, thanks for watching. Hi, Anthony Sullivan here, and you need to subscribe to Robert Wilbur's YouTube channel. He'll inspire you like no other. He's persistent, loving, magnificent, and will keep you coming back for more. And smash that like button too while you're at it. OxyClean.